Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello dear learners, we have come to the penultimate session here today. This lecture is mainly focused on discussing the awards, conferences, conventions and notable scholars of science fiction. All these lectures before uh, this particular spot, they have discussed a lot of science fiction authors, writers and their works throughout the ages. But everything will go uh, unsaid if we just not mention the amount of recognition they get from the society. Are there associations who work together to uh, um, progress, to make the progress, to contribute to the idea of science fiction? Do they, is there any kind of hand holding for the science fiction authors and scholars? We will find out in this particular lecture. First, let us move on with the key terms and ideas that we are dealing in here. Number one is award. What's an award? You give an award to somebody when somebody has done something remarkable, when somebody has uh, written a wonderful piece of literature, when somebody has contributed hugely to human society. Award is not given for a feat, it is given for the contribution. When we as human beings contribute to the race of humanity on this planet, we are recognized by the society and an award is conferred upon us. Let me give you the example of Padma Bhushan, Padma Vibhushan, Param Veer Chakra. These are very famous awards given in uh, our country. These awards are given to citizens who have done extraordinary works, who have uh, taken the society to a better place than they have found it. So all these contributions are therefore a part of uh, forming a, a think tank, a pool where the ideas uh, come and go, the uh, old ideas are replaced by the new and the new ideas are always welcomed through awards and recognition. Something that is conferred or bestowed especially on the basis of merit or need. All these um, definitions or understandings that we have talked about in this particular slide, they are taken from Merriam-Webster dictionary. It is one of the best dictionaries I have uh, told you. We have discussed this time and again. So, if you want to find um, latest words which are being added to the English vocabulary, you can easily go to Merriam-Webster's dictionary and get it. What is a convention? We have discussed award, now we are moving on to convention. An assembly of persons met for a common purpose. Assembly means assembling, the person have come together, the people have come together from different parts of the world. Have you seen such an example in your life? Not from the world, but when there is a decision that is to be taken in your family, a very grave decision, a very serious decision that is going to affect the entire family, you will see that your father's relative, your mother's relative, your immediate relatives, everybody comes to your house and they talk about it. What are the things that is to be done? What are the things that they are going to do about it? What are the things they expect you to do about it? So all these things they sit and discuss. It is a kind of group discussion really, GD. So in this discussion, many ideas come forward, many arguments are put, many counter arguments are put and therefore when the decision is achieved, it is a very foolproof decision, right? So in science fiction studies, in the field of science fiction studies, you have such conventions very frequently because science fiction is a very uh, budding genre let us say. Budding genre means it was there 
uh, since like uh, 500 years back or uh, 2000 years back there were speculative fiction available there was speculative fiction available but it was never so subtle so precise and so much in touch with scientific domains with technological domains as of the last 100 or 200 years we can easily recall Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, uh, which was published in 1818. Mary Shelley was talking about bringing uh, the dead back to life using uh, unorthodox experiments, right? So that kind of ideas are uh, only 200 years old. So this field needs nurturing. Nurturing by nurturing, I mean attention. I'll give you an example from real life. Suppose there is a child born, right? A child is born. The child will require the entire attention of its parents because it cannot work properly, it cannot feed itself, it cannot wash itself. So every time it has to do something, it will require help of the parents. Similarly, science fiction as a genre, it is very new and in, in an infant stage, I can say. Because before that, whatever it was there, it was mostly speculative fiction. And speculative fiction we have discussed, it contains horror stories, it contains gothic elements, it contains detective series, detective stories and uh, many more. So all this, it, it contains fantasy, fantastical works, fantasy like, um, let's say, there are beasts, there are animals, there are unicorns, there are ogres, there are dragons. All of these fantastical elements are present. I'll give you the two most famous um, movie releases uh, which carry this kind of um, element, fantastical elements. One is Harry Potter, the another is Lord of the Rings. And if you go to TV series, you have Game of Thrones, you have Witcher, a lot of things are there. So these are fantasy, these are fantastical elements. So earlier speculative fiction consisted of all these things, right? But now when we are talking about science fiction specifically, science fiction as a field we have been discussing, there are a lot of authors like we have discussed the A, B, C of science fiction. Then we have discussed about the big three of science fiction. We have discussed Verne, we have discussed Huxley, we have also mentioned Verne, Huxley and uh, Wells, yes, Wells. So all these authors have contributed enormously to the field when it was a baby, it was a very small child. Now it has started to sit. But still, it needs a pillow at the back to uh, support, its, uh, uh, support it while it is trying to balance. For that, we are organizing conferences, seminars, symposia and conventions so that people come together and support the field of science fiction studies. Right? What are conferences and conventions? We have discussed this is an assembly of persons met for a common purpose. So the purpose may be establishing a society, the purpose may be taking the decision of giving an award, the purpose may be printing an anthology of science fiction. There might be a lot of purposes similar to this and all of those purpose contribute to the uh, advancement of the field, contribute to the support that we provide to this field. And what is a conference? A meeting of two or more persons for discussing matters of common concern. So one is common purpose that it has a fixed purpose and conference does not have a fixed purpose. There we have the uh, let's say flexibility to put all the ideas. Somebody is saying we need to focus on the research scope of science fiction. Somebody is saying Yes, you are right, but we also need to focus on science fiction poetry because science fiction poetry is not something people are aware of, but it is a beautiful place. Can you imagine that uh, when we discussed um, Edwin uh, Morgan, 
there we uh, talked about how the computer uh, is writing its first Christmas card. There we talked about the um, thought of a module, a command module that landed on moon along with the uh, entire crew sent from NASA. So all of these things are uh, present there. Somebody comes and says, no, you know, science fiction poetry is very good. Printing anthology is very good. But what about science fiction drama? So there are participants from a lot of fields. They come together. They sit. You know, uh, maybe uh, there are elements of, um, there are arguments, there are phases, there are steps where people argue their points, counter argument is provided and then they find that yes, we have uh, purposefully, we have successfully come to all of these conclusion, number one, number two, number three, number four. So then they present a report that is a conference report that these things have been discussed and we have all of us have discussed this together and this is a consensus that yes science fiction poetry should be first research scope should be second science fiction drama should be third I'm just giving an example so that is how a conference functions next we have scholarship let us just have a brief idea what scholarship means a person who has done advanced study in a special field. Now, what is a special field? Uh, this field is the metaphorical field. Metaphorical field by, I mean, that field of science, field of technology, field of arts and architecture, fields of literature. When we mention that kind of field, there you have, again, specialization. Somebody who specializes Let's say if we talk about science, there is specialization of medicine. Then from medicine, you have specialization of, let's say, orthopedic. That means the person who is practicing medicine, he is focused mostly on the practice of uh, mending, mending bones of the body and everything that is attached to it. So this is the specialization of the person, right? So in literature also, we have such specializations. For example, in literature, first of all, you will have English literature, American literature, Indian literature, right? After that, you will think that, okay, let me consider uh, Indian literature. Then in Indian literature, you will have a different kind of specialization like Indian writing in English, or you can also have Indian writing in English translation. Right? This is specialization. Somebody would say, No, Indian writing in English. Uh, I am specializing on the gender aspects of Indian writing in English. So you see, there is a bigger picture, there is a broad category and from that broad category, you are filtering out and reaching to a very special particular category, right? So from general category of literature, you have come a long way through the process of filtering to what we call as gender aspect of Indian writing in English. So from that you are filtering out the entire thing and then you have come to this. So this is a specialization and when you have a specialization like that, you are considered a scholar and whatever you are studying is scholarship. Right, scholarship also has a different meaning. It is uh, sometimes referred to as the monetary help that an institution gives to a very promising student. A person who has done advanced study in a special field. So advanced study, for example, this course that you are studying today here is uh, introduction to science fiction studies. There will be another course 
which will perhaps be named something like advanced course on uh, let's say uh, science fiction studies there you will not be at all bothered with the general ideas because the general ideas are covered in this particular course there you will be talking about the deeper issues the deeper ideas of science fiction the research scope of science fiction many more recent achievements of science fiction many more recent uh, specialized fields of science fiction so that will be a deeper uh, higher kind of uh, academic adventure so let us move to the this part where we discuss why we are so much bothered about conferences conventions awards why we are so much bothered with all of them because recognition of science fiction as a major literary genre like i said that science fiction is at a very infantile stage right now in the higher academic scenario in higher academic scenario we have discussed in one of our uh, previous lectures uh, that science fiction has is yet to be considered a serious kind of literature when it comes to higher academics because the field is dominated by mostly uh, cultural and literary theorists who consider speculative fiction only fiction but let me tell you otherwise there is a person called frederick jameson Frederick Jameson is a, a Marxist critic he also talks about sign signifier and signified concept of Ferdinand de Saussure so this particular critic frederick jemson he is actually thought of as a very uh, prominent marxist literary literary marxist marxist literary critic he talks about science fiction in one of his famous book reviews um it's a critical writing which is called in hyperspace it is almost you know a 5400 words long essay he discusses mostly time travel and its aspects and we have discussed about this in um, the time travel uh, lecture of ours so you can just go and uh, have a look at it so all of these critics now they are contributing to the field of science fiction thereby it is slowly being pushed forward towards major academic um, ventures it is now being considered as a very important literary genre earlier it was just meant for entertainment and was a form of pulp magazine or pulp literature people used to think of it as very low kind of literature now there is also casteism and class distinction in literature very sorry to say that but uh, matthew arnold if you have heard his name matthew arnold he talks about a method called touchstone method by which he says that we can distinguish between high literature and low literature so according to matthew arnold whenever you want to understand whether this literature is a very good piece of um art then you just compare it with the classics now if we want to compare a literary work where a person is sending a space shuttle to saturn with a literary work like oedipus where oedipus is marrying his mother and killing his father uh, all of these things are happening so that is a completely different area that is a completely different time which we are talking about we cannot compare homer homer's iliad and odyssey to 
2001 a space odyssey we cannot compare that but matthew arnold says that we have to do it it's the touchstone method if this literary work can be compared to that literary work and still it can hold value then we consider it as a high piece of literature so that idea is itself very contradictory in modern world because modern world has faced a lot of science and technological revolutions in the world of reels we cannot imagine a person reading homer reading homer he will rather go and uh, type in summarize iliad and odyssey for me and uh, chat gpt and all the ai tools available on the internet they will give a very nice summary of the famous epics uh, iliad and odyssey no need to go and read but I'm, am i discouraging reading no i'm not discouraging reading i'm saying that that is the reality of the maximum number of people present here today in this planet so let's come back to this particular phrase that we were discussing for so long major literary genre so in order to boost the literariness of science fiction there must be the process of recognition and these awards conferences and conventions they give recognition to such people who work to um contribute to uh, force science fiction out of its state into a kind of flux so that it can grow it can evolve it can change it can come out of its comfort zone and be experimental right so moving forward promotion of sdg 5 gender equality and sdg 9 industry innovation and infrastructure now the possible question that you might be having in your mind right now is why i understand that sdg 9 history industry innovation and infrastructure is good but how come you are discussing sdg 5 gender equality where is that i mean okay there are women uh, or science fiction authors there are men science fiction authors then there are non binary science fiction authors we have already discussed but how does science fiction do that how does it contribute to gender equality well let me tell you there are specific targeted awards for science fiction studies uh, for science fiction written um, by non binary authors for non binary audience with non binary characters in the plot it's a very fantastic thing and we will go and have a look at it we will begin with the most important award in the area of science fiction this can be compared to almost the nobel prize of science fiction if there is any if there was a nobel prize of science fiction hugo awards would be that one the most important award related to the field of science fiction studies annual literary award it is annually given every year one award is doled out one award is given to the recipient uh, for the best science fiction or fantasy works and achievements of the previous year so suppose it is in 2020 when in 2020 um, the panel would decide that which of the novels published in the genre of science fiction in 2019 can be given this award in 2020 given at the world science fiction convention see they have a convention this is the purpose of the convention that critics from all around the world specialists from all around the world they're going to come together sit and discuss that who is going to be awarded the hugo award of this year and chosen by its members it started in 1953 as you can see one of the oldest surviving awards in science fiction studies named after hugo gunsback the founder of the pioneering science fiction magazine amazing stories so this is a magazine which hugo gunsback started and along with the magazine he promoted a lot of science fiction authors right so after promotion of science fiction authors people got to know about this field therefore the sf field was also promoted
right so due to this particular magazine of amazing stories the uh, science fiction genre was taken seriously by people and everybody started to read as well as write in this genre originally given in seven categories so remember hugo awards was started with seven categories in mind including poetry drama action um, so short stories all of these things but have changed over the years and the award is currently conferred in 17 categories so now, now there is only 10 more categories added to the entire award idea right so it is one of the most important awards uh, given in the field of science fiction now moving on to the part where we discuss the recipients of this prestigious award the hugo award recipients number one of course is isaac asimov or isaac asimov we know that asimov has a, a particular magazine to his own name he has a particular crater on the moon to his own name so all these things are very um, shows that how asimov has really contributed to the field of science fiction then we have Robert Henlin, Ursula K. Le Guin, Arthur C. Clarke, Philip K. Dick. All these authors we have come across, we know them, we know their works so far. We have discussed them entirely in this uh, uh, lecture series that we have come across. So we are not going into details about them. The new author that we will be talking about is Louis McMaster Buchholz, renowned for her Vorkosigan Saga novels. So this is one of the most important Hugo Award winners and she has written the uh, entire saga, Vorkosigan Saga. Neil Gaiman, this is one of my personal favorites, Neil Gaiman known for his fantasy and dark fantasy works, Gaiman received multiple Hugo Awards. So let me tell you that Isaac Asimov, Lob Robert A. Henlin, Ursula K. Le Guin, Arthur C. Clarke, Philip K. Dick, all of these are multiple Hugo Award winners. Along with that, we have now a new name, Neil Gaiman. We will talk about Neil Gaiman in the Advanced Science Fiction Studies course. So his novels like American Gods and The Graveyard Book, they are very famous and I will tell you about a character that he has created, Sandman. If you want to be acquainted with what kind of dark fantasy or science fiction or fantastical literature that Neil Gaiman is associated with, you can simply go to Netflix and search for Sandman. It's a series uh, that has been adapted to a TV series. Okay. So the next is Connie Willis, a talented author of time traveling tales. Connie Willis won numerous Hugo Awards for her novels, Doomsday Book, blackout and all clear so like we discussed before that there are multiple award winners for the hugo awards and this is one of them werner winch recognized for his innovative and visionary science fiction winch earned hugo awards for novels like a fire upon the deep a deepness in the sky next we have nk jemisin an accomplished modern fantasy writer, Jemison made history by winning three consecutive Hugo Awards for her Broken Earth trilogy starting with the fifth season. So we have discussed some of the authors previously in the lectures. We will move on to the next award. John W. Campbell Memorial Award for Best Science Fiction Novel. John W. Campbell, 1910 to 1971. Let first try to understand who is this Campbell fellow and why is there a memorial award in his name? Science fiction writing and he was famous for writing science fiction as you can see and as editor of Analog Science Fiction and Fact. This is again a magazine. Let us just move backward a little. See, here we had amazing stories which was a magazine to promote science fiction and it was edited and uh, contributed to by Hugo Gunsback and since then Hugo Awards. Now we have another person, John W. Campbell and his magazine is Analog Science Fiction in fact. He also contributed to the field of science fiction by promotion of science fiction works through his 
magazine. Given by several organizations from 1973 to 1979 and then by the Center for the Study of Science Fiction at the University of Kansas until 2019. So, earlier this particular award was given by a many institutions put together, but right now it is being given by Center for the Study of Science Fiction at the University of Kansas until 2019. So, until 2019, this particular center was uh, in charge of distributing, first of all, nominating the writers and then giving away the awards. Let us have a look at the winners. Rendezvous with Rama by Arthur C. Clarke in 1973, The Disposes by Ursula K. Le Guin 1975, Gateway by Frederick Pohl 1978, The Claw of the Conciliator by Jean Wolfe 1989, Marrow by Robert Reed 2001, The Yiddish Policeman's Union by Michael Chabon 2007, The Wind Cup Girl by Paolo Bacigalpi 2010, The Water Knife by Paolo Pakigalpi again in 2016, The Power by Naomi Alderman 2017, Children of Ruin by Adrian Tchaikovsky 2019. So all these authors I have selected based on the public response or the popularity of the novels. These have become best sellers when they were first released. So out of all the winners of John W. Campbell Award, these are the best. These are the selected novels. You can have and go uh, have a read of the novels uh, after this. Now, Arthur C. Clarke Award. First of all, I am sure you remember we have discussed Clarke in um, various occasions. We have specially discussed Clarke in the lecture called The Big Three. We have discussed what are the kind of uh, novels he has written, his contribution towards science fiction and how much science is there, how much fiction is there in his work. We have discussed all those things. So you can just go and have a look at that lecture. He, and let me tell you, this is a British award. That is, it is given in the United Kingdom. It is not given to Indian writers or any other country writers, but only to British authors. Given for the best science fiction novel first published in the United Kingdom during the previous year. This year, the recipient uh, will be the one who has the best publication of 2022. UK's most prestigious science fiction prize. So like Hugo Gunsback who came up with the Hugo Awards, it is in U based in uh, US. This is the most prestigious prize in UK. British Science Fiction Association, the Science Fiction Foundation and the Science Fiction London. So all these three, these three are different association. This is one, uh, this is two and this is the third association. All these three bodies, they come to a convention and they select the uh, award winning author together after a discussion. So then we can say there is a convention of all these three bodies. Now these are the uh, most famous uh, Arthur C. Clarke award winning books and their authors. 1985 The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood, Perdido Street Station by China Mayville, Ancillary Justice by Anne Leckie, the Old Drift by Namwali Serpel, The Animals in That Country by Laura Jean McKay, Deep Wheel by Harry Josephine Gills in 2022. So these are the, I have mentioned especially these two writers because they are the latest award winning authors of the Arthur C. Clarke Award. Now moving on to the next best award in the field of science fiction studies, Nebula Awards. The best works of science fiction or fantasy published in the United States. So the Nebula Awards is like sidekick of the Hugo Awards. Science Fiction and Fantasy Writers Association only. This is not given by um, multiple bodies. This is only given by scientific science fiction and fantasy writers association. 
these are the recipients of nebula awards dune by frank herbert 1965 the left hand of darkness by ursula k Le Guin, 1970 rendezvous with rama by Arthur C. Clarke, 1973, The Disposals by Ursula K. Le Guin, 1975, Neuromancer by William Gibson, 1985, Red Mars by Kim Stanley Robinson, 1993, Ancillary Justice by Anna Leckie. Now you will see that there are certain books which have received multiple awards like Ancillary Justice, uh, Rendezvous with Rama. Then we have The Three Body Problem by Liu Sixin that is in 2014, The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemisin, like Jemisin has also won a different award for a different novel, The Calculating Stars by Mary uh, Robinette Kowal in 2018. Science Fiction Hall of Fame. So this is another, um, this is not uh, an award, this is kind of a place where all these science fiction award winners are um, given entry or rather their names are taken, their pictures are hung, uh, the entire life of them is documented and kept in that hall of fame. So those who are inducted, this is the word they use, inducted or science fiction hall of fame, those who are inducted they are called as inductees. So those people that have become so much influential in the field of science fiction that they have been placed within this entire structure and uh, they are supposed to be remembered forever when we take the name of science fiction. Contributions to science fiction, literature, art and film, television and media. So not only written literature, it is also audio visual art we are talking about like film, television and media, separate media. It can be computer generated imagery, it can be graphics that uh, they are creating, depicting uh, let's say NASA satellites. There are multiple art or artistic conventions which promote science fiction. They will ask you, please paint, please imagine what a black hole would be like. Now the painter is supposed to take help of science and understand what will be the picture of a black hole and what uh, because black hole is a concept we have discussed in other lectures also that light cannot leave a black hole. Generally what happens is that we only see an object when light falls on it and then it reflects back, right? So only then this object is visible but what happens in a black hole is it has so much gravity that even when light falls on it, it does not come back. So black hole is actually invisible, you cannot see a black hole but suppose you are to understand that there is a black hole, what would be the picture around the black hole, around it, right? So it is given credit if somebody creates a picture like that and let me tell you actually there has been an artistic competition and there has been a winner and the recent sighting of the black hole by NASA satellites that has very high similarities with the artistic winner of uh, the one who thought how black hole would look like. So you can just google it and you will get the answer. So that person is definitely a contender for winning uh, the hall of fame or any award because he has visualized something in his mind which nobody else could have or was able to, right? So the winners here we have the popular names Isaac Asimov, Ray Bradbury, Arthur C. Clarke, Philip K. Dick, Ursula K. Le Guin, Heinlein Wells, Herbert, Edgar Rice Burroughs. Maybe you have not heard of Edgar Rice Burroughs. He has written small stories about science fiction and other um, areas but what he is famously remembered for is Tarzan. The entire Tarzan series uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs have thought of it is a kind of speculative fiction but yet there is an element of science fiction in it because a child which is raised by wild animals of course it is fantastical as well as possible because we have uh, historical references or newspaper reports where we get to know that children uh, who were thrown in the jungle uh, as kids who were left in the jungle as kids have survived. 
and lastly we have philip jose farmer let me tell you the names are here and the timeline or the dates are here on the right hand side okay so the on the left side you have the names of uh, the uh, people who have been inducted into the science fiction hall of fame and on the right side you have their timelines timelines their birth year and their demise year this is another category in uh, by which the science fiction world recognizes the contributors that is science fiction um, uh, science fiction world association grand masters 1994 by Kathy Fenner and Arnie Fenner the best in fantasy so these people they came up with this title science fiction world um, association the best in fantasy science fiction and horror artwork created each year the grand master was inaugurated in 1975 with the presentation to robert a hanlin and 34 other grand masters now here again you will see that familiar names come up you know about delany you know about jose farmer you know about clark leguin bradbury asimov hanlin so all of these people they have won multiple recognitions that was their amount of contribution to science fiction so these people they have these authors these authors have contributed magnanimously they have devoted to artwork they have devoted to science fiction they have devoted to literature field of literature and connected it so well with science with technology with of course dreams of the future that they have set a standard and for that you find them also in the list of nebula awardees you find them in the list of hall of fame awardees inductees rather you also find these very same names in the hugo awardees right so all these names are very common to us now this is where we talk about gender galactic spectrum awards gay is the word here which contributes to the idea of lgbtq and this is also another way of pronouncing galactic galactic has been taken from the root word galaxy right so they have intentionally introduced the word gay in this particular word galactic to signal that we are a community who try to encourage non binary science fiction characters and authors and you can see that it is established just in 1998 it's very recent right given to works of science fiction fantasy and horror that explore lgbt lesbian gay bisexual and transgender topics in a positive way not like that the villain is an lgbtq community member and the hero and the heroine they are from uh, the normal the normative heterosexual couple they are going to kill the, these people no the characters the uh, superhero characters or the characters who are involved in science and technology they are themselves members of the community of the lgbtq and the readers they are presented with this view in such a way so that there is always a positive attitude reflected right presented by galactic network a north american lgbtq science fiction fandom organization there is the word kingdom i'm sure you know that and there is the word fandom fandom means a uh, a place which is dominated by fans here it's the name of a place which is dominated by a king here is the name of a place which is dominated by fans i'm sure i don't have to explain the, what is the meaning of fans to so many hollywood and bollywood movie star fans watching the show here today all right it has several affiliate chapters across the united states and canada 
with a membership of LGBT people and friends sharing an interest in science fiction, fantasy, horror, comics and role playing games. Here I will draw your attention to one particular word that is chapter. Chapter you have must have heard that it is a part of a book, right? Chapter is a part of a book. But in this particular context, the chapter is not a part of a book. It is actually the heading of a conference or a convention. We have discussed the meaning of conference and convention. Suppose, let's say uh, the uh, Spectrum Awards, which is given by the Galactic Network, they hold conferences at a particular place. Suppose they are holding a conference in Texas. So the chapter will be named as Galactic spectrum awards texas chapter right because that particular convention or conference is held in texas okay so moving on these are some of the uh, most important galactic spectrum award winners there are many actually but i have given you the uh, gist or uh, the best of the works that are um, awarded in this particular category Melissa Scott holds the record for the most award wins. You see five. She has won five Galactic Spectrum Awards and nominations for 13. Just go and search for Melissa Scott. We will discuss Melissa Scott in uh, the advanced uh, course. Multiple times award winners Nicola Griffith, David Gerald, Keith Hartman, Laurie J. Marks and Stephen Pagel. Samuel R. Delaney, again you see this person has received a Hugo Award, he has received uh, a Nebula, he is in the Hall of Fame and now he has won the Galactic Spectrum Award also. Is notable for winning a special Lifetime Achievement Award. So not only Delaney has received Galactic Spectrum Award but also he has received a Lifetime Achievement Award. So his contribution to the entire LGBTQ community, um, boosting the morale of that community within the field of science fiction is so much so that he has been awarded with a Lifetime Achievement Award. Steve Berman and Tanya Huff were finalists seven times without winning. So we also should know that who are the possible winners of the future because they have had a very good run with the Spectrum Award uh, community. Now we are moving on to conferences and conventions. K-Lexicon, this is one of the conferences which is uh, held keeping in mind the conferences and seminars and irregularly held science fiction convention in various states. Worldcon, World Science Fiction Convention an annual international science fiction convention held in different locations around the world. It includes the Hugo Award Ceremony. So Worldcon is the convention. I am telling you again, it is the grouping of people with a purpose. So during this convention, the finalist for the Hugo Awards is prepared. The final list is prepared and also the finalist is chosen, which honors the best works in science fiction and fantasy. ReaderCon, an annual speculative fiction convention in the United States. DragonCon, a multi-genre fan convention held in Atlanta, Georgia, USA. World Fantasy Convention, an annual convention that celebrates fantasy literature and includes the presentation of the World Fantasy Awards. So there is another award for fantasy, fantasy and fiction and science fiction is also a part of it. So they also give awards to the science fiction authors. Utopia Festival, an annual science fiction festival in Seoul, South Korea. Icon, Comics and Games Convention, South Africa, an annual event in Johannesburg, South Africa. Annual International Conference on Science Fiction Studies, organized by Indian Association for Science Fiction Studies. And this particular conference is held in India. We must be proud of it. Now we are moving on to notable critics and scholars of science fiction. The number one person who we consider or we have come across and very easily accessible. You can read 
Darko Suvin's work and understand as beginners, right? Known for his work on defining the concept of cognitive estrangement in science fiction. We have also dealt with this. We will be dealing with this in the advanced course. What is cognitive estrangement and why it is important for science fiction and its political and philosophical implications. So what are the consequences? What does it mean to have cognitive estrangement in science fiction? How is it politically important and how is it philosophically relevant in the field of science fiction? So all of these things Darko Suvin talks about in his book, which we have mentioned time and again. Istvan Sisri Rone Jr., an academic scholar who has written extensively on science fiction and its intersections with culture, politics, and aesthetics. Jean Clute, an influential science fiction critic, editor, and author, known for his extensive contributions to the Encyclopedia of Science Fiction. So, another prominent critic apart from Istvan is John Clute. Farah Mendelssohn, a prominent scholar who has written extensively on science fiction literature and its subgenres, including steampunk and children's science fiction. So now we have another category called as children's science fiction. So there is one adult science fiction category and there is one children's science fiction category. We will know about these things again in the advanced course. So we know that there is a book called Encyclopedia of Science Fiction and this has contributions from multiple authors from around the globe. John Clute is one of the pers persons who have extensively contributed to this particular book. Gary K. Wolf, an academic and critic known for his insightful reviews and analysis of science fiction literature. So science fiction literature has its own critical paradigms, has its own critical appreciation processes and tools. One of the notable scholars who critique uh, these uh, science fiction authors or writers or literary works that are being composed in this era, that is Gary K. Wolf. Samuel R. Delaney. So ap apart from existing on this planet as a science fiction author, Delaney is also a critic of science fiction. A notable science fiction author and critic who has explored the intersections of science fiction and sexuality, race and identity. So we can safely say that Samuel R. Delaney is one of the adult uh, critics, commentators and writers of science fiction. Joanna Russ, we have discussed Joanna Russ. Joanna Russ, an influential feminist critic and science fiction author who has written extensively on gender representations in the genre. Frederick Jemson, a literary critic known for his analysis of science fiction as a reflection of postmodern culture and capitalism. We have just discussed about Frederick Jemson right at the very outset discussing how science fiction becomes a concept or concern of the postmodern era. Cheryl Wint, an academic who focuses on the environmental and ecological themes in science fiction literature. Adam Roberts, a science fiction author and critic known for his book reviews and academic work on science fiction literature. So these Cheryl Wint you might have heard before but Adam Roberts is a new name. So you can just go and Google about Adam Roberts. You will find number of articles, small, big, critical books written by Adam Roberts. Now we will take a short quiz time among the uh, all the other information because only the information becomes knowledge only when we process it. And the starting of the process is with questions. When we question ourselves, do we know this? Then we start to gather all the information that we have right now and try to make sense out of it. Then only we will be able to answer or understand this uh, particular concept. You can also call it a kind of churning of ideas. Churning of ideas. Okay. What is the importance of holding conferences and conventions? We have discussed this in details earlier. So you can just have an idea. You can devise your own answer. 
What do you understand by scholarship? Name some notable scholars of science fiction studies. What do you understand by the conference with respect to higher academia? Why do we ha need to have conference and how can it be um, fruitful for higher academic purposes? Research the Hugo Award recipients and their important works and write a report. We have discussed the Hugo Award recipients, but we have not discussed uh, a kind of um, summarized report. That way you will have a better insight into the field of science fiction and the specializations also of the writers. Suppose somebody specializes in time travel, somebody specializes in space travel. So if you write a report, a very short summary of all the works of the Hugo Award winners, you will have an idea of the trend, you will have an idea of the authors and their specializations, you will also have an idea of what is being promoted and what is still to be promoted and you can work in that area as researchers. Discuss how authors promote gender equality in the field of science fiction studies. Discuss how authors promote gender equality in the field of science fiction studies. Spectrum we have discussed in that order to while talking this, about the you can also refer to the in section order the lecture of uh, women and non-binary uh, authors. We have also discussed the gender concerns there. How does the science fiction writers contribute to SDG 5 and SDG 9? So SDG 9 is very important for innovation, infrastructure and uh, industry. Unless and until you promote science fiction, unless and until you promote the idea that there can be so much more to the field of science and technology that we are experiencing right now, you cannot have innovation. So in order to have innovation, you must have imagination. So science fiction boosts that. Writers of science fiction who are actually scientists, they have an idea in their head, they plant it and it moves forward with the uh, rhythms of innovative um, beats of the civilization. So you can take down all those writers and ideas which are futuristic and answer your question. So SDG 5 is related to gender equality and SDG 9 is related to industry, innovation and infrastructure. Here is a list of references that we have. These all are Wikipedia links because Wikipedia you can find there links to other websites which are directly related to this particular award. When you go through these links, I have mostly included all the links over here. These are very good for basic understanding of the awards and the recipients. But let me tell you, uh, there are also multiple links at the bottom section or the reference section of these Wikipedia pages. There you will find the genuine material available on the website regarding these authors. You will find their websites, you will find their own book, book reviews and everything. Newspaper articles most. So you can consult them and uh, discuss this with your friends and uh, um, classmates uh, to have a clarity on this subject. Thank you for uh, being so patient and a kind listener uh, for me today. I hope to see you in the last lecture time. Thank you very much.